Welcome back to our video series where we are creating a platform game using Scratch. We are into the final video now, so we are going to wind things up here, and it's going to be a quick video because we only need to add two more things to our game and we are done. One of those things is going to be a help menu at the start. The last thing is going to be some background music. Okay, so you can see here that we've got a little dog that runs around. He's jumping nicely on platforms. He collects bones well, and he's got some obstacles there he has to avoid before he finishes. Okay. So we do need a message to pop up to say that we have won the game. We also need a message to pop up if we hit some of our obstacles. And we also need a menu at the start that just tells us what keys to use to get around the game. Okay, so to get started, first thing I want to do is just go to the game control sprite and just make sure that we set the level to 1 there. Okay, We had it set to level 3 in the previous video because we were testing this third level. But when we start the game, we want to start on this screen. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is paint a new sprite. Okay. And the name of this sprite is going to be called Signs. I'll just write that in and press the back button there. And we're going to paint these sprites ourselves and we're going to actually use the vector mode. So down the bottom here, make sure you convert it to vector mode and you're into vector mode here. Now your tools for the vector mode are down the right hand side here. And you want to grab the text tool. Not many options we can do with the text in Scratch, but you can go over here and change your font to whichever one you like. I think Scratch looks the best, so I'm just going to choose that. And I'm going to write on the screen simply by clicking on it and writing Dog's Dinner. Okay. You can grab your black arrow now, which is your select tool, and move that around. And you can also make it a little bit bigger if you would like. So just stick Dog's Dinner somewhere in your game. Okay. That'll do right there. Then we're going to add in some more text. Okay. Next thing you might say, use the arrow keys to move. Might get out of caps lock though. Okay, you can just move that around to a position on your page that you think looks good. I'm just looking over here, getting a rough idea of where everything's going. This text will disappear pretty quickly when we start our game. Alright, so underneath that one, I don't know why it's getting cut off here in my preview window, but it seems to fit over there in my um, actual stage, so I'm happy with that. We want to explain what to do in the game, so we want to collect all bones to open the portal to the next level. And you can move that text around as well, just get it somewhere where you think it looks good. Yep, near the other one like that. And the last thing you want to say is that your dog needs to avoid the junk food. So maybe something like, dogs don't like junk food. And just again, use your black arrow to position that text somewhere like so. And then we run the game. We've got that text appearing on our page. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in some more text in some different costumes here. Okay, so what I might do is I might name this costume. So at the moment it's costume one. Up the top here we've got a box where we can rename it. I'm going to call this instructions because they are the instructions for our game. And then I'm going to hit the paintbrush here and make another costume. And this costume is going to be called win. Okay, so what do we put on the screen when we win the game? Now I want you to make sure you go down the bottom and convert to vector mode once again. Just grab your text tool. I'm going to stick with the scratch font the whole way through this. And I'm just going to write something, well, I guess you win in capital letters. Don't need to write anything too fancy. Use your black arrow to click on that and just stretch it out the, almost the width of your page. You want this nice and big. And you can see it over here. So just move it around on your stage until you've got it into a good position. So that text will appear on our page when we win the game. And finally, we're just going to make one more new costume. So hit the paintbrush again at the top. This costume is going to be called Lose. And again, go down the bottom right and convert it to a vector. Grab your text tool. And on the page, we're just going to write something like, Arr, junk food. That means he hit some junk food and he's just lost a lot. Well, he's just died. 
So stretch that out and just position it somewhere in the middle of the page. So again, just looking up here to make sure that it's in the right spot. And that ought to do us. Okay, if we run the game, that's how it's looking. That's fine. All right, so that's good. Now we just need to go and add a little bit of code to get these um, scripts working properly. So back to the scripts tab. We still clicked on the signs here. Oops, actually, we should be on the instructions first of all. We want to go to our events tab and bring out when the green flag is clicked. Okay, so when the green flag is clicked and we start our game, we're going to switch our costume here. So in the looks tab, switch your costume to the instructions. So your instructions appear first. Okay, once we've got that, we're going to tell it to go to a position, which is currently at. So we just use the go to X and Y, and that will put it in its current position. Back in looks, we're going to say go to front, so it's above everything else. Okay, even though there's nothing behind it there at the moment, just in case. We've just got all the text on top of everything else. And because we're going to hide it later on, we want it showing when the level first starts. Okay. To make this disappear, what we're going to do is we're just going to wait till the dog runs into it. So the dog's got to jump down and get his bone here. And as soon as he hits that text, it'll disappear. So we might start with control here and just bring out wait until. And in sensing, we're just going to choose touching and choose the player block. So as soon as our player block touches this text, we're going to go back to the looks and hide all of that text. Okay, if I press the green flag now and start that, let's have a look and see what happens. There we go. That works nicely. So that piece of code will make our text disappear. Now, let's do the code for the other ones when we win the game. So when I receive win, okay, so when we win the game, what we're going to do is we're going to switch the costume of this sign here to the win costume. Okay, that's got the text that tells us that we've won. We want that text to go to the front, so it's above everything on whatever level we're on. And we want to show it, because at the moment it's going to be hidden. Okay, so we need to show it. So we'll test that in a moment, So I just want to bring in one more. It's when I receive game over. So that means we've either hit an obstacle or we've fallen off the platform and hit the bottom of the screen. So if we get that, what we need to do is go to our looks and we need to switch our costume to lose. Okay, so the text that says, ah, junk food or something like that comes up. And we choose go to front. So it's in front of everything. And we choose show. All right, so that's about all the text we need. Let's clean that up. That's all we need on this um, sign, so we'll give it a test run. We'll just see if we can die first of all. Okay, so our junk food comes up when he hits some of the junk food. Now we'll test my playing abilities and we'll see if we can actually finish this game without dying. As you might have seen in previous videos, I'm not very good at playing games. Good start. So we just need to finish this level without dying and we'll be able to get a glimpse. There we go. So we win. So that's all working nicely. Alrighty. So that's our um, text all done. What we might do now is add some background music and we'll finish up our game. So what we want to do is go to our game control sprite. Okay, and this is where we're going to add the background music. We're going to bring out a new when the green flag is clicked. Okay, and before we go any further, we're going to bring in a few sounds. So go across to your sound tab here and just delete the pop sound that's in there. Hit the little speaker at the top, and we're going to look for some music loops. We want to bring in Xylo 2. We're going to go back to that speaker, go back to music loops, bring in Xylo 3 and Xylo 4. Okay, so you've got the three xylo sounds in your game here. There's a few other sounds we want as well. Um, we're going to hit this again. We're going to look for the space ripple sound. Okay, I don't know what category that's in, so we'll look in alphabetical order here. Here's the space ripple. Hopefully you heard that. Just double click on that, and that brings space ripple in. And I think we might have one more sound for, whoops, for when we um, win the game. I know there's a sound on here called Triumph, which sounds alright. We'll bring that in. 
and we'll have a listen to those in a moment, but you should have Xylo 2, 3 and 4 in your sound library, as well as Space Ripple and Triumph. Basically, the Xylo 2, 3 and 4 are the different um, background music files for each level. The Space Ripple is for when we start a new level, and Triumph is when we win the game. Okay, so let's get those put in. First thing I want to do, background music. Basically, when the green flag is clicked, we want to play the sound Xylo 2 until done, and that's going to be on the first level. Okay, so we attach that up there. Uh, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to repeat that sound until we get onto level 2. So what we need to do is just look for repeat until and wrap it around that sound, and we repeat it until, I might duplicate this little bit of code here, the level equals 2. Okay, so that's going to play the Xylo 2 sound in our first level. It keeps going, keeps repeating until we get to level 2. When we get to level 2, let's duplicate this code and drop it in. We're going to repeat the next sound, which is Xylo 3, until we get to level 3. And then finally, we'll duplicate that one last time, make this level 4, which means the end of our game, and play Xylo 4. So we repeat Xylo 4 all the way through level 3, and as soon as our level counter ticks over to number 4, that means it's the end of our game and the music will stop. Okay, so that's got our background music going. Let's just press the green flag and test it. Yep, it's working. Let's see if we get to look. No, actually, we'll get to level 2 later on. We won't worry about testing it all right now. I want to save time. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our events here. What we want to do is swap the music at the start of each level. We're bringing out this one here. It says when I receive, and it's going to be when I receive start. Choose sound. I'm going to choose the option to stop all sounds. Okay. So very quickly at the start of each level, we're going to stop all the sound, including the music, and we're going to just play the sound of the space ripple. So bring out play sound and put space ripple. So when you start the level, or a new level, you should hear this space ripple sound. And the last thing we want to do is put in a sound when we win. So in the events, when I receive win, again we're going to stop all sounds. I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm going to stop all sounds. And we're going to play the sound, whoops, Triumph, which is not that one. I accidentally double clicked on that. So we play the sound Triumph when we win. Alrighty. So I think that would be all the code we need. So I'll clean that up, test my game now. I think we're finished. Okay, so you can hear that space ripple sound in the background. The music goes. Let's see if we can get through this without dying. the space ripple sound and you can see our music has changed now for level 2. Oh, I didn't quite finish. We're going to have one of these bloody um, hard times. What I might do quickly is just set my level to 3 so I can just play it the third level only and finish our game up. I just want to see if the triumph sound occurs when we win. Okay, a lot of sounds going on there, but hopefully you heard a little triumph sound to show that we have won our game. So that's it. As I promised, this video was pretty short. That was just finishing off our platform game in Scratch. So make sure you save your work, and congratulations on finishing probably your hardest game yet.